Hey, welcome back guys. Okay, so so far what we have is an editable cell. However, the editor is outside the cell itself. So what I want us to be able to do is to edit inside the cell itself. Let it feel like we're editing the cell itself. Now there's a simple trick we can do here to achieve that. Since we already can edit a value directly here, all we need to do is get this input box and put it inside this cell right there. So once we put it inside the cell, it becomes part of the cell. And so once we start editing in there to feel like we're actually editing the cell itself. Okay, so let's see how we can go about doing that. Mm -hmm. So let me come back here to my uh, HTML. So a few things have to change here. So the idea is to grab this and add it to one of these. And then once we are done with it, we remove it. Okay. So instead of us having to uh, actually move this copy out of here, what I want is to be able to simply clone it. So we clone it and put it inside a cell. And then once we are done with it, we can uh, delete the clone. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or that's uh, option number one. Option number two is we can actually move it. Now, in order for us to be able to move it, we need somewhere to bring it back to and then somewhere to send it once we are there so what i what what i want to do here is let's do this let's let's add this inside a div of some kind that we can actually access so i'm going to do this let's say div then move that down here so that we have the input box inside the div then i'm going to use a class so i can easily capture this i'm going to say input holder because this is what will hold the JS input and then the input is in there so that's good this way we can tell it to bring it back into this div and then when we need to we take it inside a um, what's this the, the current cell there which is table data so let's see how we're gonna go about doing that so this is all we need to do in our HTML we just uh, line everything up here and let's come back here for a second now okay so here when we click edit the first thing we have to do is first of all we set the active cell everything here is good and then we already tell it uh, we tell the input to assume the value of the inner html of the cell that way we have a backup of what was inside the cell which we have put inside the input so even if we remove or change what's inside the uh, the cell it doesn't matter because we have a backup so what we're going to do here is now let's say move the input to the cell like that okay so how do we do that well that is simple we already have the input in our grasp and we already have the cell in our grasp. So all we're going to do is say e.target, which is the cell in this case, dot insert before. Okay, so maybe this is a, a little bit uh, complex. Now what insert before does is it will, you add two parameters here where you want to insert the, uh, what, what item you want to insert in our case it's the input and then comma what you want to set it what object you want to set it uh, after or before which item so since we don't have any other items in there we're just going to add a no value there so this is like uh, moving the self the input from outside where it is and we send it to the input but there will be a slight problem so let's see what problem that will be so let me do this 
so that's the hard way of doing it but we can do it the easy way as well so let me double click here and now you can see that i have moved the input from there to here which is kind of what we want but the problem is this content also still exists in there okay so that's not what i want so instead of using this uh, elaborate thing we're just going to use the good old um inner html right oh wait a minute uh actually this is this is much better the, the reason um i'm not using inner html here is because uh this thing has event listeners on it okay so if i just copy this text and paste it on the other side it may disturb the inner uh, the the event listeners especially if for example the event listeners were added not like this on the item itself but they were added inside the javascript like we are going to do uh, much later so if i just get the text for example i just copy this text and tell it to paste the text in there by saying in html is equal to this it may disturb whatever event listeners were actually there but if i carry this thing as an object and then tell it to just move the entire object into here it won't disturb any event listeners that were attached to this item because it will still recognize that it's the same item so that is important this is why we're using insert before instead of just replacing the inner html like that but what i want to do is before i insert that object is to clear things in there so i'm going to say um, dot inner html there is equal to an empty string like that so i clear everything and then uh, I do that, right? I insert the item. So let's try that for a second. Refresh, double click, and there you go. You see now the item is in there, well and good. But one more thing I want to do is to make that thing become um, the width and the height and all those things. That's why I had added style here. I want to say width is equal to 100%, height as well, um, maybe I'll leave that, let's see what that does, just the width itself, so refresh, double click, okay, at least we have that, but then we have this box that's showing in there, which we may not want, we may or may not want, uh, depending on the situation. So maybe 100% is a bit much. I'll try 99% because I'm seeing it's too much on one side and not the other. So let's try 98. Oops, what am I doing? 98%. So here you can tweak it until it reaches your liking. I think uh, this is okay. And then, um, wait a minute. If I double click here, double click there double click there okay so things are working out but here we are remaining with an empty thing there that's not what we want so what I want here now let me come back here for a second is to do the reverse once we update the cell okay so edo targeted value is empty uh, active cell dot in html is equal to that now before we replace the active cell data what i want to do is um, take i want to take back uh, take the input back so how do i take it back i want to capture this js input holder and put it in there where it was so in order to do this is simple I will going to, I'm going to copy that and paste it here but instead I'm looking for input holder like that okay so input I'll say underscore holder like that so I know what I'm talking about and then I'm going to say now input holder dot insert before right 
So insert before. What am I inserting? I am inserting the uh, the input. This JS input. Okay, where is it? Hold on. Which is the okay? No, we have the active cell. And okay, the input is the Edo target right now. So let me copy that. Put it here in there edo target and then no like that now the beauty of insert before you can uh, google this and find out what you can do with this but if let's say you had several items in your div let's say i have item one item two item three insert before allows you to insert an item exactly in between certain items so let's say you're not you just don't want to insert it to the end of the div you can insert it at the beginning or at the end so the way i'm doing like this where i'm adding a node there i'm telling it to insert it before an unknown object so it's just going to insert it at the very end but if i want to insert it at the top i'm going to add the item that is on top here and then need to insert it before that item so that will make it insert the item at the beginning if I want to put it between this and that, I'm just going to tell it to insert before this, so it to insert it here. That's how this works. So now what we're saying is the input holder should insert in it within itself the target, which is the input right now. And so while, once we move that, and of course, once you say insert before, wherever you got that item from is going to be, it's going to be erased from that item and moved into another item. So here, what we are physically doing is telling it to come out of the uh, cell and into its pocket here where it was before the editing started. So once we move this item, we are good to say now active cell dot in HTML is equal to e dot target dot value. And then let's empty the target. So let's see if that actually works. So refresh, let's do that. And let's go away. Click somewhere else, where, here. Okay, okay, there we go. So uh, it's happening. And this thing is back here. Mm -hmm. But why wasn't it working before I clicked anywhere? Oh, oh. So it works well when I double click on other items. Okay. Ooh. But it's not taking things back again. Let me refresh one more time. Let's see this in action again. Okay, so we're still having problems here. Okay, so let me come back here and see what exactly our problem is. So uh, the active cell dot in HTML should be oh update cell okay should be equal to that wait a minute okay so what's happening here is that because we are double clicking directly into another thing that's what we that's why we have a problem but if I can just lose focus on this. Okay, so it's not actually working out here. So what we're going to do is the uh, Blair, the on Blair is not really, uh, where is this? On Blair is not working very well. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do instead is right here on the on double click there i'm going to copy this update cell and say copy and put it here and instead of the on blair here i'm going to say click so when uh, somebody clicks oh i need the on there okay there we go so that when i click on the side just before I even double click, just clicking should be able to update the cell as well. Ooh, so now we have a problem again. 
All right. So a few things here to note. So what I want to do here is once I update, uh, you see here when I'm editing, I'm assigning active cell to some value, right? But what I can do is once I update the thing here, I want to set active cell to a null, okay? And then that way I can just ask the question, is active cell active? Then that's when I can update. So let's do that. So I'm going to say if active cell like that. So if active cell is actually a thing, then let's do the update like so. So back here like that. All right. So I hope that actually works. That way, if I just click on something, I don't get all that uh, stuff happening. But if I double click and then I click elsewhere, then I get the update. But it seems uh, things are not updating as they should be. Okay, so, so far we have somewhat of something working, but it's not really working as well. But we're going to fix it in the next video.